Mr. Ohio State is going to have to take a seat because the real Mr. Ohio State joins us now. Ben Hartsock, of course, Sirius XM host on Big Ten Radio, former Ohio State and NFL tight end. You can find Ben. He does a great job over at Sirius XM, but you can find him on Twitter at Ben Hartsock. Hi, Ben. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Doing well. Doing well. We're starting to talk about football to bed with all this realignment to bed with all this NIL and transfer portal and Congress. Let's talk ball, boys. Let's talk ball. <laughs> it does feel it's weird. What are we just 24 days away from kicking off it, it? Once that calendar hit August one, it's like a different mindset, Ben. Now let's talk about the mindset for the other teams in the Big Ten. Big Ten changes coming, of course, USC and UCLA next year. But this year, you look at the betting market, more of the same, you would assume. Ohio State, of course, plus 165, and Michigan plus 170 in conference. The third betting favorite is Penn State at 6-1. to one. Do Michigan and Ohio State deserve to be that big-time favorite in conference? Yeah, I mean... <sighs> here's, I kind of see Michigan and Ohio state and, and I will throw Penn state in the discussion as when you just do right now, I think all you can do is a, is a talent composite analysis. If you simply look up and say, okay, which O-line group would I take? Which wide receiver group would I take right. Penn state, Michigan and, and Ohio state, I think are all in the same weight class. Now, fresh off of coming from big 10 media days in Indianapolis at Lucas oil stadium. I will say those Michigan boys are walking with a little hitch in their giddy up. Like they have got some swagger, Blake Corum, the running backs wearing velvet coats. Like he's coming to America. Uh, (laughs) I, I say this about Michigan. They have had talent. You know, you can speculate where their recruiting rankings have been, but like for, for history, if you study sports history, like the four minute mile and Roger Bannister, it was like this, this ceiling that they thought no human will ever (laughs) break the four minute mile. But then Roger Bannister did it. And the moment that Roger Bannister did it, there'd be like dozens of other world-class athletes broke through. It was kind of like a mental block and they got unlocked for the four minute mile. Michigan players, I say are kind of have broken through that mental block and they are it. They're wearing it well. And I hate to say that as a Buckeye, but they feel like a team that have the talent and they also have the advantage of this like superpower of like, yeah, we can't be beat. And it's uh, it's, it, it's, it's what I see to another extent with Georgia football players, but Michigan is walking with a ton of swagger right now. Well, you know, you summarized it perfectly. I think both these teams have a great opportunity to be very successful this year. And when you look at this league, Ben, I believe the national champion is going to come out of the winner in that game, November 25th in Columbus. When you look at the inexperience of quarterback, how much of a concern do you have for Ohio State? And then J.J. McCarthy, is he a guy that can win a game against Georgia, Alabama, or potentially USC or someone like that? Yeah, uh, it's interesting what Michigan's doing to try to overcome their struggles in the college football playoff. This is how, like the 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 the, the rubric of relevance is kind of fascinating, right? It's it's Michigan's conference, but they've really done nothing in the college football playoff, and so they've implemented this quote "beat Georgia" drill that they're doing every day mm-hmm. of the week during the season. That as a Buckeye, I'm like, good, keep keep focusing on Georgia. Don't worry about uh, Ohio but, state. That plays ben, right into our hands real quick. Did they beat TCU? I, mu- I missed that game. Yeah, it's <laughs> oh, weird, right? It's, oh, a, it's, I, I, it's okay. a whole thing. I wasn't yeah, sure. You're right. Yeah, right. I, it's funny how those things work out. Uh, so, so, uh, I think JJ McCarthy has that it like, we, you don't know till you know, but he certainly has some of those intangibles that I think if given the full, uh, you know, the, 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 as long as they don't hamstring last year was like a spoonful of a time uh, at a time each week for JJ McCarthy's development. Now there should be no restrictions and how will he handle that? I think he can do it, but the problem is their featured uh, wide receiver might be Colson Loveland, the, the, the tight end. And so that's not something that gets me super jazzed up for, for Michigan fans to say that I would push in with them, but I think he's got that kind of talent. And then looking at Ohio state, who's got, you know, we're watching all these blue bloods, Georgia and Clemson and, and Ohio state and Alabama uh, get new quarterbacks, Ohio state, just in f- four cycles, you go from a, a, a historic team that has 
acceptable, but not elite quarterback play to now it's first round or bust from Dwayne Haskins to Justin Fields to CJ Stroud to now, if it's Kyle McCord and that looks like the guy, uh, the expectation is he'll be a top five draft pick in a couple years. And so I, I don't have a ton of hesitation because in Ryan day, I trust that at being able to, cause he's done it now three cycles in a row at the quarterback position. This guy's going to eventually be a top five pick and we'll see how it shakes out uh, in Indiana week one. Ben Hartsock joins us here. Sharp money, of course, Ohio state series, XM, big 10 radio, college football, Penn state. I'm not a big Franklin guy and I'll leave that aside, but you can get into what you think about Franklin as a coach, but this could be now remember he's been there a while then it left Vandy done a hell of a job. Penn state kind of a little ebb and flow with popularity, but Aller's got some experience. He's a former five-star kid. That run game should be ridiculous. Tell me about Penn state. Yeah, their talent measures up to Ohio State and Michigan, but their prove it doesn't. They they, they haven't. They've they, year in year out, Penn State has has won a bunch of games, but they haven't beaten Michigan. They haven't been beat Ohio State yet. And so Drew Aller has a tremendous amount of anticipation for him to be given the keys. It's, it, we're finishing the Sean Clifford era and, and w- Penn state has a huge amount of hype. The way that they took care of business in the Rose bowl against the, a gritty t- Utah team. That's a tough beat. They've been enjoying a ton of hype. And so drew Aller, a five star that I kind of wonder if he wasn't cast off from Ohio state, a guy that's from the state of Ohio, that Ohio state didn't take, would he be getting the same level of hype, but he is. And so there's a ton of expectation there. It, 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 it hinges on his performance. Uh, they've turned, they got some turnover at the wide receiver position. Parker, uh, Washington and Mitchell Tinsley is gone, but Keandre Lambert Smith is expected to come in and Dante Cephas, a Kent state uh, transfer with a bunch of receptions from the Mac coming in. There's excitement there, but they've got uh, the, the most beautiful specimen of human offensive line in Olu fashion, uh, anchoring that offensive line, the guys I've got a thing for offensive line, man, these, this thing is, this guy's beautiful. I saw him. I went to the Auburn game last year and I didn't know his name yet, but I, you know, you're just walking on a sideline and all of a sudden you just see this Greek God of a human. He's just unbelievable. So they've got uh, great talent at wide or at uh, running back and offensive line. They've got a ton of optimism about their, their quarterback position and the defensive side of the ball like quietly defensively Penn state has been just churning out dudes. And right now it's, it's chop Robinson and Adisa Isaac at the D line position. Uh, it's, uh, uh, Abdul Hodge is the, uh, I'm sorry. Abdul Carter is the, the linebacker. That's the next in great Penn state linebacker play. And then Kalen King, the cornerback, uh, is going to replace Joey Porter jr. They've got dudes at every level. And Manny Diaz has got that defense, uh, attacking very, very well. By the way, Abdul Hodge was good when he was at Iowa, so you're not wrong in that yeah, statement. It, yeah, yeah, I played against Abdul Hodge. Sorry, my wires got crossed there. <laughs> you're good. Um, I want to ask you, Luke Fickle was on your team when you won the national championship with the Buckeyes, special teams coach with Ohio State, now takes over at Wisconsin. How good does this Wisconsin program potentially ascend to under his leadership? Well, you've certainly seen he addressed some of Paul Chris shortcomings in the recruiting pipeline, the modernization of the recruiting department, the, uh, the glitz and glamor Paul Chris kind of shunned that Luke fickles, not a, not a glitzy glamorous guy, but he recognizes what it needs to be. And and I, I was joking with Luke cause you know, I know him personally about how they did a, a end of end of summer conditioning workout where it was like squat Tober or whatever squat fest and DJs and strobe lights. And, and like, it's everything against what he is like the Luke fickle. I know was a state champion, high school wrestler. He wants, he wants a dark, damp weight room with like staff growing on the weights. That's kind of his environment, but he knows that he's got to modernize. So he, he's a proven product as a developer and he's modernizing, but the hype around Wisconsin is Phil Longo, the offensive coordinator. And so he comes in as a, uh, as a, as a, a, a air raid kind of guy, but they at North Carolina where Phil Longo came, he had 2000 yard rushers there. There's a ton of reason why I think this team is going to still run the ball. Braylon Allen's one of the best running backs in all of college football. It's just going to be through the modern lens of spread offense. Uh, ben Hartsock, great job. Go ahead. Amal. Now I was just going to say real quickly, by the way, we talked about the high state mission game. And he was part of the great speech by Jim Trussell. You'll be part of, uh, you'll be proud of our men off the field and in the classroom. And in 116 days in Ann Arbor, Michigan, it was 310 in the speech, but I wanted to change it to today. 
<laughs> yeah, it's, uh, Luke, Luke's a guy that is a proven product. And I told this to Luke when I saw him. He was never a teammate of mine. He was a, a coach. But his his legacy, even years after he left, where he was still around. And I think that's a great credit to the impact he has. Go to vsun.com slash subscribe to become a vsun Pro subscriber today.